All right, hello, Teen Methuselah here, AKA Chris Malkus. That's my real name, but most people know me as Teen Methuselah on Twitter. That's just a sad truth. But uh, you can, you know, pretty much refer to me however you want as long as you watch my videos. Uh, yeah, I, I don't normally like doing videos, uh, mainly because I'm very self-conscious about how I talk, I'm better at writing, but I've been watching old films Flickr, uh, her video blog, she's done these nice little capsule summaries of the movies that she watches on a regular basis. She does them like five times a week, which is really cool because I get a, a deep insight into, you know, the stuff that she's watching and she's obviously really good at talking about them and I figured I'd do something like that for myself for 2015. This is going to be the first one of the year. Uh, it is the third day officially past midnight, so uh, third day of 2015. I've already seen two films, one of which I've never seen before. It is uh, Christine, the John Carpenter film based off of uh, Stephen King's story. And just to talk about Christine real quick, uh, I've seen a lot of John Carpenter, Halloween obviously, uh, Salt on uh, Precinct 13, Escape from New York. Still haven't seen Prince of Darkness, which is weird because I own it on DVD, but I kind of want to watch that in theaters, honestly. And I'm trying to think if there's any other John Carpenter stuff that I haven't seen that I need to see. Obviously, Ghost of Mars, I saw it a long time ago. Don't really care to see it again. Um, I'm sure I'm missing something, but yeah. I've seen pretty much what's considered his, his best films, and I love them. How I managed to never see a Stephen King adaptation by John Carpenter, I don't understand. But I finally watched it, and it was not what I expected at all. Not at least... Uh, story-wise. Visually, it's definitely John Carpenter uh, in his prime. Def it definitely does, you know, th the job of evoking the time and place that the story is set, which is great. It's great to see John Carpenter doing a period film, because he really knows how to handle it. Um, and it, it feels pretty authentic for the most part. Uh, it was a, a really weird... I've never read that Stephen King story before. I've read some of his other stuff a lot of his other stuff, actually, but never read Christine, and I was very surprised by how bleak uh, the film is, mainly because you have two protagonists, and uh, n doesn't end well for either of them, really. Um, and it's also kind of a, a weird, you know, the nerdy character never really gets his redemption. You know, there's there's no, um, there's no happy ending for anyone, really. Um, one of the characters that spends most of the story kind of sidelined ends up becoming the survivor, I guess. Um, try not to spoil too much here, but uh, yeah, it, it's just a, it's a dark film. I, I like that. I was very I was very surprised and, and happy that it didn't pull its punches. Christine is a way cooler uh, film monster than I would have expected from a car. Carpenter deserves a lot of credit for making that work. It's just a it's a really beautiful film, and I, I enjoyed it a lot more than I thought I would. And I'm, I'm glad I got the chance. And then uh, tonight I watched at Late Night Grindhouse at High Point Theater. I watched one of my favorites, uh, City of the Living Dead, a.k.a. Gates of Hell, by Lucio Fulci. Or Lucio Fulci, however his name's pronounced. Uh, I, I loved, I've loved this film ever since the, the first time I saw it, which is weird because I saw it after I saw The Beyond and before I saw Zombie. Uh, a friend of mine that introduced me to Fulci and Romero and Argento uh, said that he didn't really care much for Zombie, and I actually kind of agree with him. I think Zombie's a little unimaginative, uh, where City of the Living Dead has the merit of being completely bonkers. It's just a nuts, nuts, crazy horror film that doesn't have any any peers that I can think of. I mean, Fulci finally, I guess he kind of said, you know what, zombies, they're great, but you could do more with them. Let's make them ghost zombies. And he just has these things that they show up, they walk through walls, possess people. It's, it's, a, it's a fantastic, weird, awful horror film. Uh, definitely the, 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 the top of the, the pile with Euro Gore, and watching it at Late Night Grindhouse was awesome. Uh, before I went, I stopped by the music record shop in Maple uh, Maplewood, Missouri, and got the. Uh, I'm trying to think of who the Cinevox. They had the Keith Emerson Inferno on vinyl. Very happy to finally own this one. Love this soundtrack. Um, actually, to some extent, I like it better than some of the cues that Goblin has. Um, that, 
don't get me wrong, I love Goblin. But, I mean, but but Emerson and his obsession with you know merging classical and prog, I just that's great, and it worked so well in Inferno, um, especially because that film's so much more dreamlike than Suspiria is. I think less less um, less targeted, less focused horror, um, and more dreamlike. Yeah, so that was that was a great snag. I, I love the Inferno score. Um, as far as what's next, I actually have Necromantic tonight. Gonna watch that. Um, been been a while since I've watched. I had no idea what to expect. I know it's considered one of the most messed up horror films of all time, but it's saying a lot, you know. Um, are we talking like Cannibal Holocaust messed up, or like Eric Stanz's Ice from the Sun messed up? I guess Scrapbook would be a little more messed up. But yeah, looking forward to it and. Uh, that's pretty much it. If you've never seen Christine, please do do watch it. I I've, I had low, uh, low or high expectations going in, didn't know what to expect, and it was great, better than I expected. So yeah.